want to show you the triphasic breathing that we have in our system here today. And I have Tash here, she's going to demonstrate these positions. And what we want to talk about this is triphasic because it is her 3D breathing basically. So we're going to breathe from down in the, the belly, the diaphragm technically, and the side body we want to expand out here and also along the back as well. So we don't want to just People will fake this belly breathing and think that they're doing it correctly, or they'll do you know, real shallow chest breathing like is commonly seen and heard of probably. Um, but we want to demonstrate all those positions. And also what we're working on with triphasic is going to be three, three positions of the breathing. So we're eventually going to work her into breathing on her sides and her back as well. Um, for today, we're actually just going to do her back, sorry, not her back, her um, on her belly would be the third way. So. What we're going to do is um, have her in this position. So it's, it's also three parts to her, her ability to contract these areas too. So we're going to work into um, contracting and getting her diaphragm moving, of course. That's really the big uh, muscle involved people think of with breathing. The pelvic floor is involved is these two diaphragms, upper and lower here, that are contracting and moving along, uh, along with her inner unit stuff with her transverse abdominals, all these different layers, all these different players into this inner unit piece of the, the puzzle, basically. So her hands are on her chest first and on her belly. That's usually the easiest way to do things. We're just showing you here from a kneeling position, so it's easy to see on the video here. Uh, you can do this from any position, and there's different ways we can challenge things and different reasons why people will shut down their breathing in different uh, positions like that. So. We're just going to make sure she can do that. So let's show the wrong way to do this now, too, once so she can show a real shallow yeah, chest and shoulders, or you can contract in there. We know that doesn't look good, feel good, anything like that. And then if she's faking it and really breathing through there, versus, uh, again, show, it, show the right way, and then we'll turn her to the side and do a few from there. So this is just kind of fast tracking to just show you guys. Um, and you can have her turn to the side a little bit and then watch her belly expand. Again, more down here, and then now her coming up to the sides a little bit more too. She can put her hands on her side as well. And then you can see the back, we'll have her facing the camera as the back of the camera now. And now she's trying, and you can, as long as they're okay with hands on, if you're a coach, you can put your hands there, and ideally have them doing their hands uh, on their body so they can really get that tactile feedback. Okay, so we're gonna have her on her back here first. So this would be position one of the three phases of breathing. So now, this is our nice baseline position. So we can do this, this is called hook line position with her knees up like this, and that's great. But we're gonna work into something we call the lock squat in a second here. So I want you guys to see this really well first. She's gonna do some good belly breaths from here, some good diaphragm breaths. So we want to think about air coming in through her nose first, and then we're going to try to breathe out through the nose as well. The tongue should go on the roof of the mouth, her head and neck and everything are just natural, neutral, and this is just a nice position to do that. So in even, a lot of times in an even easier position, we're going to have her go into this lock squat. So she's going to cross her legs there, and then she's going to cross with her hands there, and her hands up maybe a little bit higher, not crossing maybe like that. It doesn't really matter that much. So now she's nice and locked in. Her body perceives everything as a non-threatening kind of environment. It just makes it really easy for her to feel this usually as well, because her back is on the ground, so she's got feedback there. And then she's locked in here like this. She can feel things pressing against her ribs, and you know, the lower abdomen, abdomen is, is moving as well. So all those abdominals are, are getting a little bit of feedback in there. So what we're going to work on doing is starting with 10 breaths, from this position, and we want those big slow breaths. So slow breath in. You really don't even want to hear your breathing ideally. So we're breathing in, long slow breath, and we're going to pause briefly, and then even longer breath out. We're really slowly drawing that breath out, and we're going to pause at the exhale a little bit too. We're really having four parts to the breathing. Okay. So just be able to do that and. That's a great baseline. If you're just doing that, you're already ahead of the game. 10 breaths is really the minimum effective dose to start, and up to about 30 is a great place. Of course, you can do some meditation, some other things. You can, you can do this for 10 minutes if you wanted to, but 
10 is a minimum, we want to go up to about 30. So, next phase here, we're going to have her legs down a little bit. And I want to show you guys what the next part, meaning we're going to work the transverse abdominals. So, what, to do that, we need to do in old bodybuilding uh, terms is the back in pose that we've seen Frank Zane or Arnold Schwarzenegger. They do a beautiful back in pose where they're able to draw in and it just looks like they have a hollow belly position. Um, and that, what that activating is that inner unit muscle called the transverse abdominus, which we like to say is a sleeping muscle, very commonly just underappreciated, underactivated. It's a, a vital part of everything we're doing from breathing to just any, any time of day, core, posture, things like that are all um, tied in with that transverse. Um, and also back pain, things like that are very commonly inhibited transverse abdominus. So we want to draw that in. So she can put her hand right here herself. It's better to have that person do, do their own hand there. She's able to really draw that in. We're going to have her keep that in, really drawing in on the in-breath and try to flatten that out. She can have her hand there. She just wants to make sure she's not like just put, artificially pushing in with her hand. She's able to do this really good. You see this concave position of her belly. This is excellent. It's very hard to do at first, so don't feel bad if you're not getting that in. If you're intending to just draw that in, think about like shrink wrapping. You could also Put the waistband right around the navel, right around the belly button here, and try to draw that away from the navel, especially if you don't have like a, maybe a stretchy waistband, a pair of jeans or something. It's like you're sucking in, cinching that in like, like shrink wrap, or like you have a tight pair of jeans on. Any of those cues, if that works for you, you're on the right track there. So drawing that in, and she's able to do that. Again, we're gonna go with 10 breath as a baseline, and then what we want to see eventually is her up to doing about 30 breaths. It's really cycling in more of a, a muscle neurological, a muscle endurance side of things. It's the more endurance fibers that we want to, to tap into and really wake up essentially along the way. So she's able to draw that in. We're going to have to 30 breaths. It's pretty tough, pretty challenging. Uh, and she can do that technically from the lock squat. We're just showing you this good example. She can be here just fine. But the lock squat, I usually like to get a little bit better result with people overall uh, starting point as it is. So she's going to lock her legs again and then lock her arms in there. And she can switch this off every time when she does this at home. This would be the, just the daily, again, the baseline. So we have that, again, that basic lock squat position here. And then we have the drawing in the transverse abdominis part. Okay? So what we're going to do with the, with the lock squat after, so technically I would probably do these in a little bit different order. I would do, do this in, um, get a few breaths in the baseline here, find where that is, and then start going into the transverse. Make sure you're able to draw in. The third phase now would be to move the head. So this is the position. So we have the, the position locked in. Now we're adding some different elements of, of movement. We're challenging that. With your head movements, we really want to take the chin and bring it all the way to the other side. Let the eyes lead. The tongue is on the roof of the mouth again. So she's really looking at the floor, like right where my finger is. And then she's able to turn and really look at the floor on the other side as well. So again, same rules. We want 10 to start and up to, she can do up to 30. That gets to be a little bit cumbersome and, and long um, as she's doing the breathing. So starting with 10 breaths like that. And then you can work in the transverse positions. You could technically do this in any order, but this is a nice um, baseline to put for expectation. And then also um, adding the head movement. So 10 of those. And then she's going to look up and down. She's really going to move her head and look up and down. Chuck her chin and move her chin to her chest. So you can bring the chin, try to bring the chin up and look down like through her legs, basically. And then up as far as she can go without straining. You'll find some maybe interesting like tight spots, and, and that's okay. You can turn and find some tight spots. You can just go to the edge where it's challenging and stop there for a little bit. And then maybe the next round, try to breathe past that a little bit, breathe into that. She can just hang out there and just work on some breaths there. So again, 10 of those, and then breathing diaphragmatically while she's there. She loses that diaphragm, it defeats the purpose of what we're trying to achieve here. So that's our start baseline for that level one position, and then uh, the next part we'll cover more in depth, uh, kind of phase two, deeper dive into this as well. So there you have, there's the baseline for tri-phasic breathing.